this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Yeovil Vineyard Church to our online service. I'm Karen. This is my husband, John. Hello. Welcome. If you're visiting us today, then you are especially welcome. And we really hope that you feel at home and comfortable with us this morning. So we're going to start our, our worship with about 20 minutes of singing. So please feel free to, to join in or just sit back and listen to the music. Uh, and then we'll bring a talk on the topic of the day, followed again by a worship song. So you can just reflect on what's being said. At the end, please don't rush away. There's all the information that you need to connect with us. As I said, if you are visiting, please um, keep those details and we'd love to hear from you. So before we join uh, for singing and uh, starting our worship, we're going to read a Bible verse. Uh, today we've chosen Romans 8. We're going to start at verse 35 through to 39. And actually using the message, so it's a more contemporary uh, writing style. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks, they pick us off one by one. None of this faces us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that our Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are with us now. Thank you that even though our church buildings are shut, our hearts are open to you and our churches are in our homes at this moment now. Father, we welcome you. Come Lord Jesus, come with your spirit, meet with us now. Thank you Father, we give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. This 
your beauty arches above it all.
Well, good morning and welcome to our first ever online service at live.yogalvineyard.com. I just want to make you aware of a few, few things that you might find useful. First of all, you'll see on the, on the right hand side of your screen there is a chat feed. Um, you, all you need to do to be a part of that is just to put your name in so that people know who it is that is posting and uh, you can talk away. Now the reason it's there is for us to build community. So we want to make this available for people to be able to connect with one another and uh, discuss things, um, whether it comes from from the worship or from the sermon or just to say hi to people you haven't seen in a long time. So I just want to encourage you to make use of that. Secondly, you'll notice um, in, in the bottom right hand corner there is a uh, prayer request. Um, what that is, is if you click on, if you would like some prayer, you just click on that and it will take you to a, into a private one-to-one -one, uh, chat session with one of the host team or the ministry team and uh, and they will pray with you. Um, a third thing I want to point out is um, there is a connect link at the top. Uh, if you are new here and uh, you're visiting our site for the first time um, or have been doing so for a number of times and haven't yet filled in a connect card, I just ask that you uh, click on that link and fill in a, a quick form uh, that just gives us your basic details so that we can connect with you. And then finally, 
Uh, you'll see there is also a link to YouTube and Facebook. Um, all our services um, are recorded and they will be made available on YouTube and Facebook on our channels um, as we go along. So this service, although it is broadcast at a particular time, uh, this will also be available on our channels later on. So that's enough housekeeping. Uh, today we're starting a new series called The Fruit of the Spirit. And the Apostle Paul wrote uh, a letter to the Galatian church, which was basically not just one church, but a, a group of uh, Christian communities that were spread out through the Roman province of Galatia. Um, and this included, uh, of course, the seven churches in Asia Minor. Uh, so the reason Paul wrote this letter was that uh, why he wrote the letter to all these churches is because the majority of Christians at that time uh, were Jewish Christians. And they taught that in order to be uh, become a follower of Jesus or to be a part of God's people, you needed to become Jewish. So in effect, you needed to um, become subject to the law of sin and death and be saved by your good deeds. Uh, now Paul's main argument to them was that they were preaching a different gospel to what he was preaching. Paul's gospel is that salvation is in Jesus alone. And we become a new creation that is born of the Holy Spirit. So we are no longer subject to the law of sin and death, but we are subject to the law of grace. We are saved by God's grace, not by our own efforts. So the old law deals with the corrupt uh, physical nature of man. But the new law deals with the new creation, a spiritual reality into which we are born by the Spirit of God. Um, Paul uh, goes on to contrast a bunch of sinful acts as of the flesh and a bunch of good deeds and behaviors as part of the Spirit. This is in Galatians 5. Uh, and the first of these good things, these good behaviors, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, is love and love is a verb it is an action it is a physical outward manifestation of an inner spiritual reality so over the next few weeks uh, we will focus on the fruit of the spirit as we seek to equip ourselves with the tools that we need to disciple in these or, or to be a disciple in these trying times. And so let's begin with love. Let me just pray. Well, Lord, I, I just pray that you will breathe on us now, that you will fill us with your love, with your presence, uh, with your peace, that we may be able to hear something this morning that will impact us and bring us closer to you. So would you come and breathe on us? Amen. So, 15 minutes. What can a person accomplish in 15 minutes? It turns out that you can change the world. Uh, I remember uh, a few years ago we spent an entire year um, just speaking on love. We called the series Love 15 because it was 2015 and we preached a whole year just on the topic of love. And we called them Love 15 or Love Is if you read it as alphabetical characters. Um, and I just want to return to that this morning with this concept of 15, 15 minutes. Uh, I recently I did a two-day course during which we had class for 45 minutes and then we uh, had a break for 15 minutes. And because 
Uh, I had a lot of pressure on me. I had to do an awful lot of stuff. Uh, I tried to do as much as I could within the 15 minutes uh, that was available to me. And uh, it turns out that you can do much, much more than you could imagine uh, when your life becomes focused into that 15 minute window. So I began my day with a worship song, just seeking to be fully present in the moment, to center myself in Christ and to drink in deep from His love and His peace and His presence. Because I knew that that was the time that was available to me in order to, con to make that connection with Christ. Um, and it was just amazing how much peace I had, even after just five minutes. And 15 minutes was pretty much enough to sort me out for the entire day. But practicing it 15 minutes in every hour, it brought to me a great joy and transformation. Perhaps the next 15 minutes can change your life, can change the way you live, not wasting away the endless hour, but being fully present in the next 15 minutes. So come Holy Spirit and help us to just connect with you for the next 15 minutes. The Apostle Paul, uh, when he wrote uh, the letter to the Galatians, was full of the Holy Spirit. And he wrote this. Let me read to you. I'm going to read from Galatians 5, uh, verse 13 to 26. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So, uh, in this piece of scripture, Paul contrasts two ways of living. So we can indulge the flesh, or we can serve others humbly in love. We can bite and devour each other, or we can love our neighbor as ourself. We can gratify the desires of the flesh, or we can walk by the Spirit. We can be subject to the law of sin and death, or we can let by, be led by the Holy Spirit in freedom. We can live the fruit of the flesh, which is that list of sinful behaviors, or we can live the fruit of the Spirit, which is the list of good behaviors. We can envy and provoke one another and be conceited, or we can keep in step with the Spirit. Uh, so Paul says, 
that the acts of the flesh are obvious. And I just want to summarize it like this. It is a list of self-inflicted selfness. It is about always about me, about what I want and what I desire. That is the root of everything. But here too, we should, we should, uh, we, we find a verse that should really frighten the life out of us. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So just think about that. The constancy of self leads inevitably away from God. No matter how sincere your intentions, no matter how justified your feelings, and no matter how reasoned your thinking, constancy of self leads inevitably away from God. And contrast that then, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. And of course, the rest of that list. So if you want to know whether you are in the flesh or in the Spirit, just measure your love. When we are born of the Spirit, the current that flows through our veins is love, the unconditional love of God. But the heart of flesh that pumps uh, within us pumps blood, and that is destined to die. But the heart of the Spirit that pumps love will last for all eternity. It seems to me like love is the base element from which the spiritual realm is made. The Spirit produces love. Paul says that uh, we live by the Spirit. So I am a Spirit, I'm given life by the Spirit, and in order to keep living, I need to keep in step with the Spirit, for in Him we live and move and have our being. Uh, now, just reflecting on this, have you noticed how life is speeding up? We seem to have less and less time, and we have to do more and more stuff. Uh, Rudyard Kipling, um, not to be confused by Mr. Kipling, who makes exceedingly good cakes, says that we should fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of distance running. And basically, that is that we should give every minute the absolute best we can. Well, yes, you, you will achieve more than the average person, but you are not a human doing, you are a human being. And I have found that 15 minutes spent withdrawing from the world slows everything down and makes the other 45 minutes of an hour far more productive. And I found that to be a good balance between being and doing. When I've spent just five minutes in the presence of Jesus, the other 45 minutes already takes care of itself. But after 15 minutes, my soul is singing and I am able to take that which is spirit and breathe it into that which is the flesh. Uh, you, you may recall the story of Amnon and Tamar. They were both children of King David, and Amnon uh, was the half-brother of Tamar. And he fell in love with her because she was really beautiful. And uh, so he, he, he intensely desired her. He was sick with love after her. And so he conspired in order to have his way with her. Uh, he wanted to have sex with her, but she refused. She even offered to marry him, but he would not listen. He wanted to have his way. So uh, instead of, of waiting a bit and getting her hand in marriage, he overpowered her and he raped her bringing devastation and destruction on both of them. That is not love. That is flesh. That is that constancy of self. That I want what I want, when I want it, in the way that I want it. It's instant self-gratification. That is not love. 
Paul describes the nature of love to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. And he says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. How, what a contrast that is between Amnon's love for Tamar and the spirit of love. We are not defeated and destroyed in one big battle. Rather, our hearts slowly lose its way through space, uh, in the space of time. We are not defeated once for all time. We are defeated moment by moment. Little by little, we give our lives away through the choices that we make. Therefore, fixing our hearts cannot be done with just one big gesture, it requires time. We must learn to love moment by moment. We always try, or if you like me, I always try to fix uh, the life or the day or the hour um, with one big gesture. But victory comes moment by moment. Uh, I want to uh, issue you with a breathing challenge. Uh, I want to challenge you to find a secluded space and spend just 15 minutes resting in the love and the peace and the presence of Jesus. And then see whether the next 45 minute, minutes of your hour is better or not. To live we must breathe in oxygen and breathe out uh, carbon, whatever, dioxide, hopefully not monoxide. <laughs> anyway, to live spiritually is to breathe in God's love and then breathe out on those around us. Breathe out love on those around us. So take 15 minutes and breathe in God and then go and find someone to breathe out on. That is life in the Spirit. Uh, producing the fruit of love in abundance. I want to tell you a quick story about uh, something that's happened uh, this week. Uh, I got a message from Doug, who is doing an internship with the church, and he asked me uh, what my thoughts were on an essay that he had written I'd given them an assignment and, uh, and I asked them to write this essay. Uh, now at the time I had read it, um, but right at this moment uh, I was extremely busy and I had no time to answer. Um, I, I couldn't remember off the top of my head much about the essay um, and so I knew that in order to answer this truthfully uh, I would have to take the time to reread it and give a truthful answer. Now, the easy thing would have been to just choose um, choose the flesh and say, mm, yes, Doug, great essay. I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. It would be a convenient lie that would not hurt anyone, but it, uh, and it would not occupy any more of my personal time but it would be a small decision made in the flesh. But because I had spent 15 minutes earlier in the presence of Jesus, my heart was filled with love and I just had to breathe it out. So I took another 15 minutes and I read that essay again in order to bless and encourage Doug. And the moment I began reading it, I realized it was a setup. The Holy Spirit had prompted Doug to ask that question at that moment. 
And what's more, the Holy Spirit had his fingerprints all over what Doug had shared. And it was speaking right to my heart and affirming the thoughts that I wanted to share with you this morning. I had stumbled into a God moment because I had taken the time to spend, to breathe in Jesus, and I had taken the time to breathe out on Doug. That is life in the Spirit. We get it all wrong. We try to breathe out on people without breathing in Christ. Those are dead works. They do not bless others. But when we take the time to breathe in first the love and the presence of Jesus, we impart life to those that we breathe on. Paul uh, wrote to the uh, Thessalonian church and he included a prayer that I want to include this morning. And he said this to Thessalonians 1 verse 11. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. So, yes, Lord, we pray this morning that you will help us to find that rhythm of breathing in your love and your peace and your presence and then breathing out of other, on others so that we may love and serve those around us. Let us walk in step with your Spirit. I pray, Lord, that your love will be multiplied by your power at work within us. I just felt this morning um, that there were some people that God just wanted to um, speak to, um, have a message for maybe a few people. And the first one was this. I just had a sense of you being somebody that has had your breath knocked out of you. The, the things that have happened to you in your life has, has gotten you to a place where you've got the stuffing knocked out of you. Your breath, you are out of breath. And you are saying to yourself, I will never love again. And you feel disconnected from God. And God says to you this morning, you are right. You will never love again. Unless you start breathing, you will never love again. You need to start breathing. You need to take the time to sit down with God and just breathe in His love. He is the source of love. And without breathing in, you are not going to be able to breathe out again. So I just want to encourage you to lean into God and not to focus on the events that have happened in your life, but focus on the future. And the future that you have is a future full of love and peace in the presence of God. And then secondly, um, I was reminded of the, the story, the shack, and the father that had lo lost his daughter, and how incredibly this impacted on him. And when he imagined the horrors that she must have gone through in her dying hours, uh, he, he, he just could not forgive and he could not forget and he could not move on. Uh, he, he kept on holding on to his daughter and wanting revenge and, and, uh, and just being so full of uh, self and selfish emotion and then God takes him through a process of helping him to let go helping him to see 
that his loved one really is better off in the presence of God than to be with him. And so he had to let go of his claim on the person he loved because he realized that the person he loved was really better off being with God. And I think a lot of us have been facing death lately and have been facing uh, suffering and, uh, and asking questions um, and having lost loved ones and uh, whatever your case may be. And the thing is that um, God, we always expect that God would, would change the circumstances so that we can get what we want. But take the time to breathe in the unconditional love of God. And that will help you to release the ones that you love into the presence of God, where they are far more blessed than they will ever be in our presence. So I just want to encourage you to, to, to love those that you love all the more by breathing in Jesus and breathing out love on them and releasing them to God. And then I also felt that uh, for someone there this morning that uh, Psalm 102 uh, will be poignant, um, will speak into your situation. And I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, whatever you are feeling, whatever you are going through, that you will take the time to just sit down and cut off all of the world and its busyness and its distractions and just spend that time with Jesus. Go and spend your 15 minutes wisely. Amen.